What if we told you that the Bible speaks of a giant race, half human, half spiritual being, that lived on earth? What if we told you that some people believe they are still among us, while others claim they died in the flood? The figure of giants plays a significant role in mythologies and religions. They often evoke ideas of superhuman strength, though in many stories, giants are characters with tragic ends. The Nephilim were biblical giants. In this video, we'll focus on unraveling the mysteries that surround them. How did they come into existence? What were they like? And could they have built some of the historical monuments around us? Make sure to stay until the end, as we've gathered fascinating evidence of their existence in recent times. Let's begin. The Nephilim race begins with the illegitimate, ungodly crossing of boundaries between the divine and human. They barely appear in the Bible, but when they do, their presence is known. Let's break everything down. The first mention of the Nephilim in the Bible occurs in Genesis 6, in particular in Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. The war the heroes of old, men of renown. The sons of God were 200 fallen angels, divine creatures no longer, sent to earth to watch over humans, but instead acted on their lustful thoughts. These angels were known as the Watchers. The Book of Enoch, a book not found in the modern Christian Bible, speaks of the angels who fell out of grace with God. In 1 Enoch, the sons of God refers to fallen angels led by Shemehaza that descended to earth to find women and marry them, breed with them, and have corrupt offspring. As we can read in Genesis 6 verse 2, these fallen angels fell in love with beautiful human women and married them. The sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. The result of these ungodly unions were the Nephilim, giants grossly distorted by their unnatural origins. Since their fathers were fallen angels and demonic creatures, the Nephilim were evil and thus brought disgrace to humans. Enoch chapter 7 verse 10 explains the origins of the biblical giants. Then they took wives, each choosing for himself, whom they began to approach, and with whom they cohabited, teaching them sorcery, incantations, and the dividing of roots and trees. Chapter 8 describes how the angels taught humans, in particular their wives, magical cures, incantations, and folk medicine. They also revealed mysteries like astrology and divination, which the Lord disapproved of. Let's read 1st Enoch chapter 8 verses 3 to 8. Amazarek taught all the sorcerers and dividers of roots. Armeros taught the solution of sorcery. Barakiel taught the observers of the stars. Achabel taught signs. Tamiel taught astronomy. And Aseradil taught the motion of the moon. So, these fallen angels revealed dark enigmas to humans, particularly to their wives. What's more, the Book of Enoch also explains that children were exceptionally tall, and these giants needed so much food that they ate humans to fulfill their needs. And the women conceiving brought forth giants, whose stature was each 300 cubits. These devoured all which the labor of men produced, until it became impossible to feed them, when they turned themselves against men in order to devour them and began to injure birds, beasts, reptiles, and fishes to eat their flesh one after another and to drink their blood. Then the earth reproved the unrighteous. First Enoch chapter 7 verses 11 to 15. To counter the devastation these giants created, the Lord commanded his heavenly angels to take force. Again the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot, cast him into darkness, and opening the desert which is in Dudael, cast him in there, throw upon him hurled and pointed stones, covering him with darkness, there shall he remain forever, cover his face, that he may not see the light, and in the great day of judgment let him be cast into the fire, restore the earth, which the angels have corrupted, and announce life to it, that I may revive it. 1 Enoch chapter 10 verses 6 to 10. The watchers needed punishment for their sins. 
They were fallen angels who took human women as wives, mated with them, taught their own children to sin, and destroyed the earth. In turn, God destroyed the earth with the flood. The great flood came upon all life on the planet, washing away everything in its path. It was a catastrophic event that left destruction in its wake and erased all flesh from the face of the earth. The only survivors of the flood were Noah, the animals in the ark, and seven others who rebuilt the world. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 5 And God did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. According to Peter, the Nephilim should have died in the divine flood. But the Bible mentions giants again in Canaan, the promised land. Before we get into Canaan, we need context first. What does Canaan have to do with all of this? What happened after the Bible first mentioned the Nephilim? In the book of Exodus, Moses and the Jews escaped slavery and traveled through the desert for 40 years with the Ten Commandments, traveling to Canaan, the region that today comprises Israel. The Lord asked Moses to send men to spy on the people of Canaan, the promised land he was about to give to the Israelites. Following his orders, Moses and the Jewish spied on the residents and wrote a report, as we can read in Numbers 13 verses 32 to 33. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. There's only one answer to who these giants were. The Nephilim had arrived in the promised land, but how? Hadn't they all died in the flood? Apparently, they hadn't. Some people claim the sons of God managed to survive the flood and returned to the area years later. Others argue that one of the wives of his sons held the Nephilim gene. The only time the Bible mentions the giants again after Numbers 13 is in Ezekiel verses 32 to 27. But they do not lie with the fallen warriors of old, who went down to the realm of the dead with their weapons of war their swords placed under their heads and their shields resting on their bones, though these warriors also had terrorized the land of the living. This is the last time the Nephilim race appears in the Bible. After this mention, they seem to vanish from earth. Were any of the biblical characters we know giants? If we think about it long enough, there's a good chance that the story of Goliath comes to our minds. Was Goliath a Nephilim? The book of Samuel narrates the story of a champion, a great warrior, the champion of the Philistines that traveled the region to attack Israel. The Israelites avoided fighting back, for no one dared to confront such a colossus. Why did an entire civilization fear a warrior? Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 4 to 5. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. A cubit is about 18 inches long, and a span is approximately 9 inches, meaning Goliath could be as tall as 10 feet. He was definitely much taller than regular warriors, and thus stronger, and everyone feared him. His bronze armor weighed 125 pounds, much more than many people weighed at that time. All this evidence suggests that, indeed, Goliath stands as a descendant of the Nephilim. The Nephilim today. So, as we reach the end of the video, there's only one question left. What's left of the Nephilim today? How do we trace them back and comprehend better history? Bruce Fenton is a renowned author on this topic. If you're interested in reading further, he has a book titled Exogenesis, Hybrid Humans. His theory and research focus on extraterrestrial genetic manipulation, and he studies ancient DNA to find evidence that the Nephilim existed. He's confident that he can prove their existence by finding DNA evidence in modern humans. Archaeology research is also worth mentioning. 
There's more than enough evidence that archaeologists have found very large bones and weapons that could only belong to a giant. What's more, some theories propose that Stonehenge could only be built by giants. Why? Because the stones are too large and heavy for normal-sized men. Of course, we now know the extent of technology, but did men back then? According to Britannica, archaeological evidence suggests Mesolithic hunter-gatherers made the first modifications to Stonehenge. That was roughly 6,000 years ago. The same applies to several well-known structures that human beings can only erect with machines and cranes that ancient civilizations couldn't possibly access. While giants building these monuments is just a theory, it's worth reflecting on it. Were they the creators of monuments we're amazed by today? Recently, we came across the case of a man who went missing after sharing a clip of what appears to be a giant standing on top of a mountain. He went by the username at Handicapped and hasn't posted anything since May 17, 2022. Most viewers who had originally seen his video are now left questioning what happened to him. In his clip, we can hear him saying that it's a person standing on the mountain and asking the driver to pull over. The post went viral soon after with millions of views. He tried to film the giant again in the following days, but wasn't successful and eventually moved on. After this, weird things began happening. A CIA agent stopped Dawson for trespassing, he spotted a shady car outside his home, and he even saw a helicopter extracting something from the area. What does this all mean? Our theory is that the Nephilim still wander the earth. A creature of such dimensions can only be one of the descendants of the fallen angels that bred with human women in biblical times. So now it's your turn. What did you learn in this video? Did you know that the Nephilim taught humans all these secrets that led to sins and decadence? Did you know that they survived the flood somehow? If you've learned something or found the video entertaining, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this.